In this video, we're going to look at an example of finding the average value, or what the average value of a function must be if the function is concave up over the entire interval. All right, so we're assuming that the function is concave up, and let's just, for argument's sake, make sure that the function is also positive on the interval from a to b. We're going to show that the average value of this function is actually greater than the function evaluated at the average of the endpoints. All right, so here are your two possibilities. Your function could be increasing in concave up, which would look this way, or it could be decreasing in concave up and look this way. <clears throat> in either case, since the function is concave upward, your tangent line at the point x equal to plus, uh, a plus b over 2 must be below the curve, right? If it's concave up, that means your tangent line comes in and touches and leaves and is below the curve on that entire interval. So, if we were to calculate the area under the curve on the interval from A to B, that must be bigger than this trapezoid that would be formed by uh, looking at going from A to B here. So this would be uh, your height, if you will, of the trapezoid. And then this slanted part would also be the other side of your trapezoid, and then you would have these two bases. So this trapezoid that you see in here would have a smaller area than what would be underneath the curve. All right. Well, we can calculate the area of the curve easily. It's just the integral of the function over the inter uh, interval. We already have recognized that this is a trapezoid. So I need to figure out what the height of the trapezoid is and what the length of each of the bases are for the trapezoid. Well, the height of the trapezoid will just be b minus a. That's pretty straightforward because that is the length of the side that's between the two parallel sides of the trapezoid. To find the length of the bases, I have to do a little bit of work because the, the height, the length of the bases will be going from the x-axis to this point right there on the line. And similarly, that, similarly for the other one. All right. However, we can figure out what those lengths are if we look at the equation of the tangent line here. So remember, for the equation of the tangent line, we would find the y-coordinate by plugging in a plus b over 2 into the function. <clears throat> we would find the slope of the tangent line by plugging a plus b over 2 into the derivative. And then we would have, uh, using our point-slope form, we can figure out the equation of the tangent line as y coordinate plus slope times x minus x coordinate. All right, so if we want to find the left vertical side of your trapezoid, we're going to plug in a for x and simplify this mess. Well, the only thing that really needs to be simplified here because I don't know what f is, which means I don't know what f prime is. I plug in a for x. This would be 2a minus a, which gives me a positive a minus b over 2. To find the right-hand side, I would plug b into the tangent line. To do that, I put b in for x, so I would get a negative a, and then plus 2b minus a b, so I get b minus a over 2 for the right-hand side. The important thing to notice is that, notice that the a minus b over 2 and the b minus a over 2 have opposite signs. They're the same magnitude, they're the same absolute value, but they have opposite sides. signs. So if I add these two pieces together, this plus one plus this one, I would get those two terms cancel. Why do I care? Well, that's exactly what I need to do when I calculate B1 plus B2. I need to add the left-hand side and the right-hand side length of the trapezoids. So these two pieces cancel. All we're left with is two times F of A plus B over two. And we have one half times the height. That's the other part of the area of the trapezoid formula. So notice your twos will cancel, and then we already established that the height was b minus a. So we get the area of the trapezoid is b minus a times the function value. We're almost done. Area under the curve for the function was the integral. Area of the trapezoid is this expression on the right-hand side. We already established that the area under the curve should be greater than the area of the trapezoid. Divide both sides by 1 over b minus a, and I forgot to rewrite the integral down. This should be 1 over b minus a times this integral. It should be 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And then that's exactly what the average value of the function is.